Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today we're gonna look at my three shoebox cassette recorders and we're gonna do test recordings on all three and just sort of compare and contrast and have some fun. So we've got the Tyler, the Radio Shack, and the Sears, and we've done individual shows about each one of those. So if you wanna learn more, you can go back and look. Basically, this is a DC bias. I believe these two are gonna be AC bias as well. Uh, for power, this one has a DC power supply, this one has AC, and this one is running DC on batteries, although it has a dual power mode, so you can run it on AC as well. I have taken the liberty of cleaning all of the record and play heads, so they should be ready to go. I cleaned them with isopropyl alcohol on a cleaning cassette. For recording, I'm going to be using this little guy right here. This is a new acquisition. This was given to us by our friend Fartemark. It's just a very simple, old school, little condenser mic uh, from Panasonic. And on the end, it once had two plugs and now it has one, but it's the only one we really need, which is the mono eighth inch jack. So that's pretty much all there is to it. We're just gonna record on each, play back on each, and see which sounds better. This is obviously the newest. So this is like current day. This is 80s. This is 60s. So we've got three different decades that we're working with. My thought process is these guys are gonna be pretty comparable in quality. Should be noticeably better quality than this. So let's go ahead and do a recording. Flipping the mic on, play and record. Okay, this is a microphone test. We are using the Panasonic hardwire microphone with the Tyler portable recorder and cassette player. This is a brand new unit and it's lightweight, it's plasticky, but it's reminiscent of some of the other units we have here on camera, most notably the Radio Shack and the Sears. So testing the audio recording, seeing how the fidelity is. Somebody told me that with DC bias recording, you only get to use half of the media because the uh, electricity that's being used for the, for the uh, bias is going in one direction. So anyway, testing one, two, three, four. And we're just going to play it back. Simple as that. Let's give it a test. It is a microphone test. We are using the Panasonic hardwire microphone with the That is fully maxed out on the volume. Player. This is a brand new unit and it's lightweight. It's, it's adequate volume. But it's reminiscent of some of the other units we have here on camera, most notably the Radio Shack and the Sears. So testing the audio recording, seeing how the fidelity is. Somebody told me that with DC bias recording, you only get to use half of the media. So very similar to what I remember from the review of this unit, the sound is pretty distant and muddy. This is definitely only adequate for like, you know, taking notes, possibly recording lectures, although the built-in mic was, you know, a little bit worse. Definitely you're not gonna wanna record music on this. But let's see what the difference is with an AC bias recorder such as this and more vintage technology. This, uh, by the way, all three of these have an automatic volume control on the, on the inbound audio. So you don't have to adjust. This one you can, but for all three of these tests, these ones, you, you have to use the built-in volume limiter, controller, whatever. It's all automatically gained up or down. So... Same thing, let's go ahead and record. Okay, now we are testing on the Radio Shack TRS-80. You do get a little red LED, sort of a VU meter there as it were. It's not showing peaking, it's literally just showing signal. But anyway, we're testing on this. This is an AC bias recording, so we are getting the full benefit, all the real estate of that magnetic tape with the superior AC bias technology. This is the CCR81 cassette tape recorder that uh, was originally part of the Tandy computer lineup and you can use it and actually via Westlife just happens to have a video up today uh, where he talks about a very similar product where you can load and save computer programs on cassette tape. Pretty interesting stuff. Okay, that is the end of our test. One, two, three, four. All right. Let's see how the 80s does in comparison. I think this will be a lot better. Let's find out. On the Radio Shack TRS-80, 
RS80. Oh yeah. You do get a little red LED, sort of a VU meter there as it were. It's not showing peaking, it's literally just showing signal. But anyway, we're testing on this. This is an AC bias recording. It's got recording, so much so volume compared to the other benefit. one. All the real estate of that magnetic tape. That's only on three and a half. The superior AC bias technology. This is the CCR81 cassette tape recorder that uh, was originally part of the Tandy computer lineup. And you can use it, and actually the OS Life just happens to have a video up today uh, where he talks about a very similar product where you can load... Definitely superior. I mean, it was sharp. It was crystal clear. Obviously, this is not a high fidelity, you know, musical type of, you know, test as it were. It is simply, you know, really sharp dictation, vocals, far superior sound quality wise to this guy. Wow, my arm looks huge in that camera angle. Okay, let's not do that. So anyway, that guy definitely beats this one. And let's go even further back, 1968. Now this is interesting. So a couple things on this unit. This is, today's the first day I've actually ever tried recording on it. You'll notice the mic input is right there. Aux, um, let's see, mic. Oh, those are dual mic inputs. That's aux and that's earphone. Okay, because I was like, wait a minute, I don't have a mic that'll fit that smaller socket. However, I do have, it will fit this one, which is the typical size that the rest of them have been using. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in there. I thought I was using an aux input. That's what I was trying to say. Also, when you are recording with this one, you do get a VU level down here, which is super cool. I have the AVC or the automatic volume control on, and that's pretty much all there is to that. So pressing record up here and play engages recording. And now we can start. We are now recording on the Sears tape cartridge recorder from 1968, solid state dual power, meaning it, it you know works off of batteries as well as AC power. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see this view meter dancing here. It's kind of cool. Testing, one, two, three. You can see that red line acts as a red line, <laughs> as it were, for the VU meter. So we are giving good signal. Should get a good quality audio back. Somebody had asked, uh, how do you set the level if you're not using the ABC? How do you control it? And I did test that, by the way. And it appears as though the volume knob turns into the input gain control. And I tested it by turning that off and it was very quiet. It corresponded, correlated to that. So anyway, this should be a pretty sharp recording as well. Again, I believe it is AC bias, although I'm not 100% sure. But let's go ahead and test this one out. If you guys are hearing a distant sound, sort of white noise, the cooler decided to kick on mid-show. So my apologies there. Hopefully you can still hear clearly. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a listen. By the way, we're using typical, cheap, normal type one tape. Tape cartridge recorder from 1968, solid state dual power, meaning it, it you know works off of batteries as well as AC power. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see this VU meter dancing here. It's kind of cool. I think it sounds Testing good. One, two. I think it sounds near. I think this is probably a little bit better, and it could just be you know fresher speaker, you know, compared to this one. Audio back. Or Somebody amplification. Asked, uh, how do you set the level if you're not using the ABC? How do you control it? And I did test that by. I think they're. I think both of these are very, very. Again, like I predicted, these far out shine this. You know, this uses probably a, t a Tanishin. You know, you know, knockoff or a tan maybe a real Tanishin mechanism. DC biased. It has a you know full time erase head that isn't you know an electromagnet, so it's always on, therefore it has to be moved out of position, things of that nature. It's just a substandard quality compared to them. You get the job done, and uh, you can definitely make recordings and hear what you recorded. But if you're really listening to the audio quality side by side, this thing, I think, sounds the best. And I think this is very close behind, very, very close behind. Some people said this thing is ugly. I think it's cool looking. I don't know. It's very... It's very old school and I love it. This thing weighs more than these two combined. Just a beast. Okay guys, I hope you thought that was interesting and fun. Just a little simple test there. I thought about bringing out the Sharp suitcase one, but we'll do that on a different show sometime. But I thought we would just do a recording test. It's something we really didn't review so much when we were doing the reviews of these. So I wanted to do a little bit more. By the way, um, this was given to me to supplement the little 
crystal mic that was in the reel to reel because the little you know controller one that came with the Electra and I did them side by side tested them and this one is better so this is a good down and dirty microphone for that use and it's just a dynamic mic so it's like an SM57 SM58 something like that cool all right guys that is going to do it for today thank you for watching I appreciate you more than you know give me a thumbs up share this out hit subscribe if you haven't done so but that's going to do it for now happy record hunting we will see you tomorrow